Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to get rid of annoying Microsoft Word having to configure every time you launch it if you have different versions of Office installed. So right now I have Office 2010 and 2013 installed. So 2010 right here and 2013. So I recently got Microsoft Office 2013 from Microsoft HUP. Basically HUP is, um, stands for Home Use, um, Home Use Program. So right now I'm a current student, um, so I, could, I, was a, I was eligible for this. So since if you also have a work email, I don't know, depending, depending on participating companies, you can get Office for $9.95. So this is a pretty good deal because Office Professional Plus is pretty expensive. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll just get this because this is actually a bargain deal and I can get the full everything. And I'd eventually want to upgrade event, uh, on on this product anyway. Uh, so I would get this um, while it's currently available for $9.95. So for me, I like to keep an older version of software sometimes running because I think um, 2010 of Office is pretty stable and I am still used to the interface. And it will take me a while to get used to the new Microsoft interface um, for their latest software, the Windows 8 and Metro style uh, flat look. So without further ado, I want to show you how, uh, this is the basically common issue that people have if you're going to run multiple versions of Office. This also includes, I just want to note, um, just want to mention this, that um, it includes 2003 and 2007 installs of Office. So right now I have Office 2010 that I use default and I have also have 2013 installed. Um, I've already installed it as you already saw. Um, However, when I switched to between um, Word um, 2013 and 2010, I always get this configuration process. And it only does this for Word, not PowerPoint, Excel, Access, Outlook, you name it. So it only does it for Word. And if you have a slow computer, um, this process can take a very, very long time. Fortunately, I have a pretty fast computer, so um, it doesn't take that long to do. But it's, this is just pretty annoying if you have to um, if you want to use different versions of Office. So right now, as you notice that um, the Word icon right here changed from 2010 to 2013. So basically, when Microsoft configures this, because Word is the most commonly used, I believe, um, Office application, it actually ends up setting up all your defaults to use to um, that version that was configured. So if I click on new, it shows up as publisher as the late, as a newer icon. Here's PowerPoint right here using the new um, icon or software. So this is basically um, PowerPoint 2013. So unfortunately, so if I switch back to Word 2010, I will get to this annoying configuration process again. And it's just an endless, endless loop. So however, I was looking on the web and I found out how to stop this and I wanted to share share this with you. So if I go to my scratch drive right here, um, there's I forgot the name of the website, but I'll try to include it in the video description to give credit for this because I didn't find this, I didn't do this myself. So this is basically a batch file that will edit um, your um, current user registry uh, for the different versions of Office installed. So right here, um, office um, slash, uh, slash uh, 11, 12, 14, and 15. So this relates to different um, releases of Microsoft Office. So 11 is for 2003 release, 12 is for 2007, which was terrible by the way, and then 14 is for 2010, and then 15 is for 2013. So this will add it to your profile, um, current user profile, and this will actually disable the nagging um, feature of um, of every time you launch Word. Only Word, just to let you know. So I would highly advise you uh, advise that you pick which version of Office you want as your default. So if, um, so as you saw, um, I went back to Office two thousand 
10 and I um, set that as my default because I use that I want to use that regularly and sometimes try a word out or office 2013 um, just to get used to a new interface and maybe there's might be some compatibility compatibility issues with the newer one compared to the older documents so I'm, I'm just used to 2010 because I've been using it for many years so right now I've already can set up Microsoft Word 2010 or configure to Office 2010 and now I will just simply run this batch file but before I run it I can show you where it actually edits in the registry settings so if I type in regedit.exe you'll basically be brought up to this menu um, H key or high key current user you don't want to scroll down to software and then scroll down and expand the tree on Microsoft and expand the tree on Office. So right now I have Office 2010 and then 2013. And then basically right here. So now I'm going to close this out. I'm going to run the batch file. Um, CMD just opened up. I'm going to reopen up uh, RegEdit. Oops. Um, sorry about that. And then now that you see uh, that the other string values have been added, of course you could do this manually. Right here, you could just um, create a new sub, uh, create a new um, new key, and then you just create it as these names follow. And then you would create a new uh, D word, D word, uh, um, thirty-two um, thirty-two bit value, and just set it with these names and set it as a default value of one. So you do that for the other installs of Office if you have it. This batch file just basically does it for um, Office 2003 to 2013. I assume this would actually be the same for any later release of Office. So now since I've already ran the batch file and I run uh, Word 2013, I won't get any configuration as you um, saw that happen earlier in this video. So right now that's basically... Uh, this little batch file solves that. I will include this in the video description and also to the contents of what's in the batch file right here if you really want to add it, to your, um, add it yourself. But I would just highly recommend just downloading the batch file and just running it. And it works uh, works great. I haven't had any nagging issues. And I just want to let you know that this configuration batch file only works for the current account. It does. It's not global or local machine wide so if you put a new user on there you're gonna have to run this batch file or have the user run it uh, to get rid of that nagging so I would just set up your program defaults for that user run that file and then basically you're good to go so the last part of this video I want to uh, um, provide the office 2013 um, ISOs or installers hopefully I'm not gonna get in trouble for this but when I bought um, the office 2013 it was really hard to find the installers. That it spent like an hour or two just look on the web for that, and it's just a, it was really frustrating. I talked to Microsoft support and to see if they could give me the offline installer, because unfortunately when you buy the um, H up um, version, which is actually no limitation of license or anything, it's just a reduction in price for um, since um, they'll do that if you're a student or employee. Um, they won't provide the offline installer. It's just they give you the web version, which is just um, I think it's like um, half a meg or something. It's gonna actually connect to Microsoft servers and um, download the um, installer files. But what happens if you reform a computer? You don't have internet temporarily, or your internet's just really slow. Um, you want to? Uh, it's it's just nice to have the installer um, offline. So right here, these are just basically the ISO files. So I'll run an MD5 check um, hash sum for you to show you what's going to be included in the video um, description. Um, so this, so when you download from Dropbox, you want to make sure that this matches um, with what you're uh, what you're getting. So this is the 32-bit English version only. I, I won't be providing any other uh, um, uh, languages right now or at the moment. And then this is the 64-bit version right here coming up. So these uh, these two strings right here. Oops. Yeah. So these two strings, and then basically when you get the ISO files, um, you basically would want to download Virtual Clone Drive or Daemon Tools. I use Virtual Clone Drive, 
and you pick which one you want to uh, install. So I installed the 32-bit one. So you mounts the virtual clone drive. Um, it shows up in the little uh, CD drive icon. Um, sometimes an auto, play, auto run icon would show up, but I disabled that because that's just annoying to have every time you plug in a device. So you copy your files, and then you create a new folder. You can call it, um, let's see, office install or something. And then you just open up the folder and paste the files in. And this is about, um, let's see how big this files. Are. Yeah, it's about 600, 700 megabytes. The x64 bit's a little bit uh, larger, but it's not that much bigger. And then it'll install, it'll maybe take like five or 10 minutes to install, depending on your computer. So that's pretty much it here. I'll include everything in the video description and a summary of this video. So basically, uh, I provided a way to uh, get rid of annoying um, setup configuration every time you launch different versions of, of Microsoft Office um, launching Word. And I also provided the ISO files for you. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.